Welcome to Achieve Revision and Learning Videos. My name is Ritesh Kumar Singh and I am a senior educator and mentor on important issues concerning the people. Today I am going to discuss a topic called electoral bond. After many years of delay in the court, it has finally been decided by the Supreme Court. It is going to be heard by a five judge constitution bench to decide on the validity of the electoral bonds. So let us ultimately see the entire things connected with coming of electoral bonds and what are the problems which are associated with it and the questions raised on its transparency. But before that we are also will discuss about why the corporates are so much uh, eager to fund certain political parties and why the political parties are willing to accept any kind of money. So but before that let us go back to a little background. Corporates role throughout the last 100 years in shaping India. So let us talk about the pre-independence period. So in the pre-independence period during the Indian national movement. Also, there were big business houses like the Tatas, Birlas and the Dalmias. So, let us go start with the pre-independence era that is in the Indian national movement period. So, the big corporates of the time were the Tatas, the Birlas or the Dalmias. Now, these were the corporate of the time but they were involved in funding the national movement. That means the intention was right, the intention was helping the Indian national movement achieve its goal that is political independence of India. So they were funding the Indian national movement as and when required because they were ultimately driven by a concept of trusteeship. So let us talk about trusteeship now. So concept of trusteeship. So this was given by M. K. Gandhi. So according to trusteeship concept, yes, Gandhi stated that the corporates or the big businesses are the trustee of the society. Why? First of all, the consumers show trust in them by buying their products. Hence, they earn for, by selling the products to the consumers. So, hence, they become a trustee. And hence, they should be using certain amount of money they earn for the welfare of the communities. This concept of trusteeship gave rise to a broader concept called corporate social responsibility, which is a global concept now. That means the intention of the corporates or intention of big houses big business houses in the pre-independence era was to support the noble cause of freedom. Now, when you move towards a post-independence period, now post-1947 onwards or post-1950 onwards, when you move towards a mixed economy with the coming of five-year plans. So, let us talk about a mixed economy of five-year plans. So, so, now, during the mixed economy of five-year plans, the economic control was in the hand of the state, means the government. So, the state controlled, the so state controlled Yes, your mineral resources, so state controlled strategic areas, state had bought big or small PSUs which were divided into Navratna, Maharatna or the Mini Ratna, means the major production, major economy power was in the hand of the state. So what was the private sector doing? Private sector was very, very controlled, yes, controlled, it has got a limited area of operation. So private sector was controlled gradually under the concept of license and permit raj. So in the planned economy period, the state had got more means, more economic power and the private sector had got a limited scope because of license permit raj. So the private sector was not very, very powerful, state was powerful in terms of economic might. But gradually this started to change with the coming of 1991 LPG era, liberalization, privatization, globalization. Now, henceforth, an, another shift emerged in Indian economy from 1991 onwards. So, 1991 onwards, now the state started to withdraw. Yes. So, state withdrew gradually from what? Economic control. It moved toward disinvestment along the private sector, more scope and investment along private sector, more scope to invest and operate. So gradually what happened from 1991 onwards till now, for the last almost 30 years, the state has withdrawn gradually and the private sector has moved towards having complete control authority of the economy. So now here, gradually the private sector became very strong. So private sector economic might increased. So, government started to sell their stakes, private sector uh, were invited to invest, overtake certain areas, global investment, all these give rise to what again more and more private sector led investment 
and the state withdrew gradually. So the economic might of the private sector increased in the last 30 years. Now we know the political parties are the non not for profit organizations. They have to work dependent upon funding. They are supposed to receive funding. So they receive fund from their what uh, their own membership or the members. They receive fund from what small local businesses. <laughs> they receive fund from what even the bigger industries and businesses, and they also receive funds from what big biggest corporates. So they are dependent upon funding. And we know elections also became expensive over a period of time. So dependency upon different type of fundings increased. And if you want to get bigger funds, so dependence upon corporate funding increased. Now who are getting powerful? The corporate because they were now having more economic resources in their command and control. So getting money from them, the political party was just eyeing more and more largesses or more and more donations from the bigger corporate houses. So importance of corporate funding increased over a period of time. So that means so corporate funding became important for winning the elections. But still there were certain checks and balances to what extent the corporate can fund a political party. There are certain limitations which was still there which was bringing still a degree of transparency. So let's see what was that. So all donations above rupees 20,000 per donor. All donations above rupees 20,000 per donor should not be in cash. That means all the donations above rupees 20,000 per donor should not be in cash so that they can easily be tracked with proper records. So hence they can be in the form of checks. It can be what online transfers. It can be in the demand drafts. <coughs> that means all those traceable methods of funding. So traceable methods of funding. So first of all, this was the condition. Now at the end of the financial year, the all the political parties have to submit their total contribution that they have received in the form of donations, the entire volume yes, to the election commission of India for again scrutiny. So now, so here again, so they were easily checked because by these type means of uh, donations, it can easily be tracked who is funding whom. So that means still everything was very open. And there were one more major limit. A corporate or company which is going to fund a political party, there was a limit. It cannot fund beyond maximum 7.5% of average three year net profit. So again, there was a limitation. So it should not be above maximum 7.5% of its average net year, three year net profit. That means there were two major limitations which was still bringing a scope for transparency in the political funding by the corporates. But here elections became more expensive. Yes, there was a more desire to control the narrative. Okay, there is a more focus on elections, elections, elections. Okay, if, when you use more funding, there is a more power to what manipulate the narrative. Yes. That means so now the money became the key. Now, but here still there were limitations in term in the type of money that can be accessed. So hence, there should be a way out where the big money should be coming. The big money which cannot be traced, which cannot be tracked yes, and which can be coming anytime and from any source. And for this desire for big money to dominate the elections each and every time gave rise to a thing called electoral bonds. But before that, how a corporate usually fund a political party? The process first. We know in the corporates, they are board of directors. The board of directors, so the resolution is passed to the board of directors meeting to allow funding of an X party or Y party. But we all know the board of directors are hardly a very secretive group of people, hardly what 12 to, max, 12 to 15 people max. So they may have got a pre-decided decision to fund an X party and Y party. So BOD, BOD meeting can just become a formality where the draft resolution is already being framed in the manner that it can easily be passed. So hence on this the law commission recommended a change. Law commission recommended that the BOD is not the right process. Because here the purpose is the allocation of companies fund, companies profit, companies profit to a political party. But when we talk about decision making on a distribution of profit, the decision should be moving through the AGM, annual general meeting of the shareholders. So hence the law commission recommended amending section 182 1 of the Companies Act 2013 so as to remove the requirement of uh, BOD approval with the approval required for funding of the political parties through annual general meeting of the shareholders. Now AGM can be a more uh, more more what uh, more uh, decisive process or more uh, intrusive process in checking. Why? 
because here the shareholders have the power to what we check the performance they can ask the questions to the board of directors they have got more uh, they get they want to get more input in the functioning of the company for the best interest of the shareholders how they are functioning and secondly why the shareholders become important because in case in case if the shell companies or the just the companies of paper are being used are being used for funding to electoral bonds then the agm process if it is made mandatory can easily check that because a shell company definitely will not be having real list of shareholders so the agm process can be a better way of of approving the funding to the political parties via a corporate so let's see the procedure first so now the procedure is uh, so for big money so big money definitely we are talking about big money a new route has to be found out because still there were limitations of corporate funding because certain checks checks and balances were there in terms of what volume of funding as well as what the type of funding so hence the desire for big money now which which may be requiring a new way forward but let us see the current method of funding which is usually comprising of funding is done by approving the resolution to board of directors meeting so as we told you as i told you that bod can be secretive process a decision can be pre decided so on this the law commission recommended amending section 1 to 1 of the companies act that the resolution for funding of political party should be passing through the agm annual general meeting of the shareholders so agm becomes important because it scrutinizes the company's perform performance strategy dividend payment can also ask questions to board of directors agm are important for the governance of the company they are the platform for shareholders to express their views and ask questions on the company's management and affairs and we all know that uh, funding to political party issue of what use of profit and distribution so what is a better platform agm because uh, shareholders have the first right on the profits in the form of dividends now agm was suggested to making the process more transparent because shareholders are also the owners of the company and as, as i also told you the real list of shareholders will not be there if the electoral bond as a method is being used to fund via the shell companies so now so hence a new path was opened to electoral bonds to bring unlimited money the big money now that that was introduced from the finance act 2017 now what is actually finance act so after the passage of after the what discussion on the budget find the budget is being passed in the form of the finance act finance bill is being brought and the finance act has been passed but here the power of the finance act is along with the passage of the budget it can also amend the other existing acts and those um, amendment in the existing acts the government say are being done to facilitate the implementation of budget so hence in this finance act 2017 certain existing acts are also amended like the fcra act foreign contribution regulation act fcra act companies act were also amended by ultimately telling that this amendment or these amendments will be helping in what better implementation of budgetary provisions let us see what were these amendments which were done in the fcra and the companies act and other acts which which actually facilitated the functioning of electoral bonds now first of all electoral bonds what are they can be bought by any indian citizen or company incorporated in india means a company registered in india from select branches of F sbi so every 3 months or uh, maybe a window is opened from the sbi select branches for buying the electoral bonds it's almost like a demand draft yes that, that means you are buying the electoral bond in name of somebody means here the name of a political party and then that bond can be handed over to the maybe the office or maybe sent to the office to of the political party by showing the bond paper in the bank so the political party can withdraw the cash withdraw the cash so here yeah, so what is the volume of such type of donations now issued in multiple values of rupees 1000 10000 1 lakh 10 lakhs or 1 crore that means multiple values multiple values now when we see the higher denomination bonds which can be bought in multiple values definitely the intention is to facilitate the big corporates to fund regularly and by using multiple denomination bonds now how hence emerges the mismatch the mismatch between uh, the coming of the electoral bonds whether it brought uh, maybe what changes is brought in terms of what uh, the functioning of the political funding and what was the law commission recommending 
law commission recommending that we want to create a better check or improve check on the corporate funding because BOD is not the right process so elevated to the level of AGM in terms of creating a check and that can also check funding from uh, coming from the shell companies not real companies because they will not be having a real list of shareholders but now the amendments which were brought to bring the electoral bonds were actually in the reverse direction they diluted the standards of transparency so let's see them one by one so first amendment was done in the FCRA so foreign contribution regulation act 2010 logically speaking political parties should not be allowed to receive foreign funding political parties are not for profit organizations like the NGOs now when there are enormous regulations on the NGOs to receive foreign funding then why the political parties be allowed foreign funding directly because if somebody is going to fund if any party is going to fund or any person is going to fund any institution is going to fund or any or secretive uh, person is going to fund from outside outside the country a political party definitely by funding a political party which can be a major party which is potential to form the government so that means funding coming from outside can 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 control the policy making of our country so controlling of the policy making of our country from outside is a direct is a direct dent on india's sovereignty but here but here the foreign funding of political parties uh, was allowed through this amendment but and also not from the date of amendment but from the retrospective effect that is from the year 1976 this means the political parties were receiving illegal funding before all those illegal funding were now made legal by making this amendment from the retrospective effect the year was 1976 onwards now that means the political party can receive fund directly from the foreign shores but still there is a risk if larger volume of money coming directly to the political party for insurance, still there can be scrutiny. Still there can be scrutiny. So why not? Why not route this fund via Indian companies? Route this fund via Indian companies. So hence it may be requiring what amendments in the companies act. So three or four major amendments were done in the companies act 2013 to facilitate the routing of the foreign funds via Indian companies, and these Indian companies will be buying electoral bonds and then funding the political parties. So let's see the amendments. Now, as we know, the process is Board of Director Resolution approves the funding of a political party. Now, first amendment that was brought with respect to election funding by the corporate in the Companies Act was, now even BOD approval is not required, even BOD approval was also removed. Now, that means it can be done by sole person, that is it can be CMD or the CEO. What the Board of Directors can do? With a standing resolution, it can designate or empower a person, it can empower a person like the CMD or the CEO to decide on the funding of X party or a Y party. That means even the board of director resolution was also removed. So rather than moving towards the AGM approval, it was further diluted towards one person what decision making. Through a standing resolution, it can be it can be passed very easily by designating a person like the CMD or the CEO of the company as a decision maker. Now, next, uh, next was uh, next change that was brought was that any startup company can fund. Early the provision was so next is uh, any startup company can fund. Earlier the provision was that a company which is going to fund a political party should be at least three years old means at least three years in financial operation. Three years should be have history of paying taxes. This means that this means that because the condition was maximum 7.5 percent of the average three year net profit that means this can be a real company who has been in operation for many years have got proper list of shareholders also now this condition was removed now any startup company can fund that means what can be done register a company on the paper which can be a shell company or which can be a startup company also now show it a foreign partner or investor route the money from outside bring large volume of uncounted money Maybe some investment in the business of the company, but the other money can be utilized for buying electoral bonds for funding the X party or the Y party. That means now it becomes more easy when any startup company can fund. That startup can be purely a shell company. That startup company can be a company with a business orientation. But again, even if a company with a business orientation, if large volume of money is coming, certain part can be utilized for the business. Other volume of money can be utilized for buying electoral bonds also. 
Now that means it became an open affair. Maybe this may be a reason of so much of what noise behind startups, startups and startups. But the really the many startups are failing, they are not working. But still there is a huge noise behind the startups. Maybe this may be the reason. Now further, now so earlier the provision was a company can fund when it at least three years old and have history of paying taxes. Okay. Now earlier, earlier the as you told uh, as, as as I already told you that a company can only fund what maximum seven point five percent of its three year net profit. So there was a limit. There was a limit. Now this limit was also removed. This maximum limit was also removed. That means any volume of money can be routed via electoral bonds if the company is funding via electoral bonds. So even the maximum limit was removed. Now see the sequence of the thing. Now understand the sequence of the things. The sequence is very clear. First of all, approving the foreign funding of political parties. Make it more easy. Route the fund via the companies. Companies, companies registered in India. So companies registered in India, so it can be a startup company also. Now for this company, for companies to be funding, there is no requirement of BOD approval. With a standing resolution, one person can be made a deciding authority whom to fund. Now what volume money can be funded? Any volume money can be funded which can be beyond maximum 7.5% profit, no limit is there. And what type of money can be funded? It can be rooted from outside the country. It may be what may be uh, dirty money also, it can be drugs money also, money laundering also, illicit money also, nobody has got a track, yes. Any kind of money can come and can be utilized for buying the electoral bond or funding a party. So this becomes very problematic. Now, also there was a provision to safeguard the company also. Now the companies which are using electoral bonds to fund the political parties, they can also hide it from their profit and loss account. That means that funding can be hidden from the company's profit and loss account. This means it can also be kept outside the audit, audit process. That means smartly they have ultimately sided every possible scrutiny. Now the next recommendation or the next change was in RPA, Representation of People Act 1951, where the, where the political parties are registered, where the political parties' functionings are being mentioned. Now when uh, there is a way of safeguarding the company's funding to electoral bonds in the company's debt. Why not also safeguard the political parties receiving funding from electoral bonds? Now, as I told you, political parties are supposed to what, reveal the source of fund, the total contribution coming in the year to the election commission. Now, with the coming of electoral bond, one condition was removed. That means the, the volume of money the political party receives, receives or a political party receives can be told or can be informed to the election commission, the volume. But out of that volume, if a particular volume is coming from the uh, electoral bond, the size of the volume can be mentioned, but not the people or companies who are contributing this electoral bond. That means the list of companies which are contributing to electoral bond should not be mentioned to the election commission. Only the volume of money which came to electoral bonds can be mentioned. Again, that means it is also outside of scrutiny even of election commission for India. And again, and these type of electoral bond based fundings can be shown as voluntary donations to a non-profit company. So it can also be brought outside the scrutiny of Income Tax Act. So section 13A of Income Tax Act will not will be providing exemption. So again, so even safeguarding the political parties. So again, RPA, the total volume of money it has received including the volume of money received by electoral bond can be told to election commission but not the people who contributed, not the companies who contributed to electoral bonds. That cannot be scrutinized and by showing the voluntary donations, they can also be safeguarded from the scrutiny of Income Tax Act 1961. So that means there are enormous loopholes if the Supreme Court are going to, is going to look into that, that means it can, it can bring huge question marks. On the, on, on the transparency of the electoral bonds. Now here, so what all these things ultimately create first? Even, I, even this image which came in the Hindu newspaper, which is putting a question mark, bond, villain. So this is not a James Bond, the hero. That means electoral bond, which is a villain, a question mark. So let's see the volume of money which have been poured in by the, uh, by the electoral bonds in, the, in three financial years. So we are going to mention about three financial years. So 2018, 19 to 2020, 21. 
Okay, so here, so financial years 1819, that is two years. Yes, this is two financial years we are talking about. Two financial years, the volume of money. Now, total income from electoral bonds for these two years for the national parties we are talking about. National parties, so there are seven to eight national parties, and the two biggest national parties are BJP and Congress. BJP is the ruling party, Congress is the major opposition party. So now the national parties. So total volume of funds received by electoral bond in two years, two financial years, was 5029 crores by electoral bonds. 5029 crores. Now let's talk about the two largest national parties here, BJP and Congress. So BJP is the ruling party. Out of 5029 received 4028 crores. That is substantial chunk going to the ruling party. Now the Congress here received 711 crores, 7 per 1 crore. That means still there is a huge mismatch between the ruling party 4028 crores and the second largest party 711 crores only. Now if we ultimately what combine these two, so 9374, 4739 crores, total 5029 crore and this is basically distribution between 7 to 8 parties. So 5029 crores minus 4739 crores is 290 crores. So 290 crores for rest of the four, five or six parties. Okay. Two parties cornering what more than 4500 crores, but still only BJP corner, cornering 4000 crore rupees out of what the 5000 crore amount. This clearly shifts the power in the hand of the ruling party. So there are more chances of winning the elections regularly because elections has just becomes the money game. The more the money the party has, the more the money the candidates has, more power to win the elections, influence elections. Now this can be done very, very easily. Yes. Now, so but this distorts, this distorts the multi-party democracy by, by giving too much power, too much power to one or two parties in the country. Now that does not mean... And big money has the power to spoil uh, the morality and ethics of any party. So if this party is under control, maybe the new party which may be forming the government in future can also be spoiled by the electoral bonds because big money has got the power to spoil any political party. Now, so what can be negatives which can be there from the electoral bonds continuity? Now, first of all, when we talk about electoral bonds, so this gives rise to a thing called crony capitalism. When big money is coming from certain corporates and the political parties are willingly taking those who are money, that means these political parties are in the control of the big corporates. Now the big corporates can force the political party which is in power to design the policies favoring the business of certain corporates only. So there is a tilt, tilt of power towards two, three, four big corporate houses and the party in power has to do it because it has taken enormous funds. So it is under foundation. The political party is not independent from the clutches of the big corporates. So hence it gives rise to a term called crony capitalism. So this crony capitalist almost becomes Sayyid brothers. So in the history, in the later Mughal age, there emerged two brothers, Sayyid brothers, who became so powerful, who became so powerful that they started to control the emperor. So they just, just wanted the puppet kings. So they can also become the emperors, they can manipulate the parties in power and the leader of the party also. Okay. So here, so in crony capitalism, because now they start dictating the country's policy making. So government's power in deciding policy goes down drastically. That's the first major negative. Now second, now two, three big corporates become too much powerful leads to what monopolization of assets, economic assets, monopolization of various businesses which is trade in the hand of few big corporates, monopoly. And monopoly is disastrous for free trade. Because when I talk about a basic concept of capitalism means of free trade is there should be multiple players, there should be multiple businesses who should be competing with each other. When a large number of competitors for the market, what happens the end beneficiary is the consumer because in their competition, in their competition, they focus on attracting the consumer or the customers on the basis of the improved quality on lesser prices. But when there is about complete monopolization of the business, so quality also declines for a period of time and the prices rise up and beneficiaries never a consumer. 
and it also kills the other small and big business, small and medium businesses, and hence it kills the on, uh, entrepreneurship in the country. It also leads to decline of MSME sector, micro, small, and medium enterprise sector. It also leads to decline of employment in the country. So it tilts the economy in favoring so certain big corporates. It creates more economic inequalities. So hence, medium and small businesses suffer. Employment declines in the MSMEs because the huge capture, control, consolidation of the most of the economic assets and businesses in the hand of the few. And the government, which is in power, which is taking enormous funds, is bound to do it. Now, concentration of wealth. This leads to concentration of wealth. So, concentration of wealth leads to more inequalities and disempowered people, and it goes against the concept of welfare state. The concept of welfare state is mentioned in the DPSP, Directory Principle State Policy, and the particular Article 39. Article 39 talks about that a state, that a state should act, yes, a state can act, should act, can act against concentration of wealth. But what we are seeing is a huge concentration of wealth that has been revealed by the Oxfam reports. Oxfam reports say that 1% of people in India captures for more than 70% of wealth, and the rest of 99% are having what? 25-30% of wealth of the country yes. and the lowest uh, and, and when you talk about the poorest yes more, almost nothing so this has led to what enormous consolidation of wealth concentration of wealth and here this has been done because of certain parties are bounded by big political funding coming from big corporates and now it's mostly due to two electoral bonds because they cannot be questioned SBI can sell the bonds so SBI has got a record SBI knows who is funding whom but that is kept outside the scrutiny of RTI, right to information. Government in power also knows who is funding whom. That is why various business houses may not be having the courage to fund opposition parties because the government knows who is funding whom. And it becomes a very dicey affair. Yes. Because people, as a common person, as a common person believing in a powerful democracy, as a common person who is believing in my power of vote, I may not be scrutinized and questioned yes, who is funding whom so that's to reveal yes, reveal who is funding whom and the and the and the background of those money for where it is coming. So we cannot ask. Further, big money, so when the big money is coming in large numbers, so it spoils the ethics of political parties and media houses. Now, now any type of money is welcome because the money is the key. It does not matter what kind of money. So even dirty money is welcome, which can be money laundering and round tripping. And when all these fishy things are happening, when all these fishy things are happening, so now the focus is on what, how to divert the attention of people from the real issues concerning them. Because all these things which are happening behind the doors, or means behind the curtains, have to be hidden from the public front. Otherwise, if the public knows, so that means there is a problem for all these type of setups on the network or nexus. So, hence what I mean, the nexus which is working is the corporates which have the big money, these control the political parties, the political parties which the political party which is the potential from the government of the center. They are not interesting funding of maybe smaller party or a state party or a local party. Because their business interest is throughout the country and outside. So they will only be funding a national party which is potentially from the government as center. And they will be putting more money so that potential is realized also, achieved also. So hence control the political party. Now they want to set the narrative, so hence control the media houses. So media houses are getting the big money, political parties are getting big money. Now this becomes a deadly nexus, deadly triangle. Now hence to hide the real issues which can be what? rising inflation, huge unemployment in last 45 years, the highest, okay. uh, education is declining, Indian students are running out of the country, large numbers, high net worth individuals in what, uh, what millions are leaving the country, they are stopped doing business in India and they are starting their ventures somewhere outside the country. Okay. Now huge corruption in different departments which have increased, multiplied and even the methods of corruption have changed. But to hide all these type of things, definitely it's required what divert and rule policy. And this divergence is being created by the IT cells by creating what fake messages. And these fake messages are being put through WhatsApp 
hence the term which has given rise to whatsapp universities and people as usually they are being fed with all these doses on daily basis they start believing in all these messages and they keep on forwarding to each other similarly this is also done toward media houses on television so hence emerged a term called godi media so that means it's th this nexus has the requirement of the fake information to be percolated on daily basis as an agenda for the people to hide this nexus which is working behind and all this has been giving rise to what uncontrolled money unaccounted money which is easily now coming through electoral bonds so hence it is creating problems for what so you may be thinking that you are voting but you are not voting you are forced to vote in such a manner because the narrative has been set so as to divert your attention in a particular way and even induce you to vote also in a particular way so maybe you we as a citizens are also losing our voting power because we are not being told the real facts so this gives more power to one or two big national parties now can you spoil any party in power if the current ruling party is getting spoiled by this big money if this party is replaced by another party in power it can also get spoiled because big money can spoil any political party money has the power to what would spoil anyone if the person is actually coming under the under the control of money so here can spoil any party so distorts level playing field multi party system because the richer becomes richer richer becomes a control that's why number of mps and mlas in assemblies and parliament are mostly crowded parties now yes because politics has become a rich person game and from where that money is coming they are coming from dubious sources okay and party is getting dubious sources money mostly from the electoral bonds distorts so overall overall the electoral bond based funding system is weakening various things first of all is weakening the democracy because the voting patterns or the voting methods are also manipulated by big media big marketing big influences diverting the attention weakening the democracy kills competition competition among the political party systems also competition in the economic field also because the entire economic might is shifting towards big big corporates only small medium level players and are are not able to compete and they struggle or they die over a period of time now this empowers people so rather than discussing the real issues of the people so their attention is being diverted so they are disempowered by not listening to them or addressing their basic issues which are which are the day to day issues which improve the life of the people weakens welfare in terms of justice so political justice economic inequality economic inequality breeds economic injustice social inequalities rise So that means the real welfare is has taken a background because the other big things are being shown to the people, which may not be directly improving the justice in their life, whether as a political, economic, and social. So that means electoral bonds are very very disastrous for a democracy like us. We want our democracy to become more powerful, where the people are more empowered. It should become very successful like the Western European democracies. We are still a very young democracy. We want what. best way forward and the best way forward should not be coming through electoral bond based funding system which is completely opaque in nature which lacks transparency at all which can invite any kind of dirty money also and which can spoil any political party so what is the way forward yes i just already told you now the supreme court had decided to listen this case from 31st of october by a constitution bench comprising of five judges and i hope that the justice cgi Uh, Justice Chandrachur, who is the Chief Justice of India, uh, make a lasting impact by uh, scrutinizing electoral bond, which can be disastrous for a democracy. And if the Supreme Court looks into uh, the things in a deep manner, definitely there are more chances. There are more chances. Electoral bonds can be wiped off. Yes, and wiping off electoral bonds is our request. Yes, is our desire, so that we have to restore the faith in the political democracy and also re-empower the people. Thank you for watching the video. please uh, subscribe the video for more informative content that's going to be presented on regular basis and whatever i discussed on the board is there in the pdf attached to the link of the video so subscribe the channel press the bell icon for more and more information from my side thank you